The video you're about to watch is a video that is available in my Lumix Pro course. It's a course that I created in order to help Lumix creators like you become more technically adept with their Lumix camera. There is currently over three hours of content teaching you the video and photo settings on your Lumix camera. The course covers every Lumix camera because between different Lumix cameras, the menu systems don't change that much, but the best thing about my course is that the one-time payment gains you lifetime access to a growing library of videos, and I will be adding a section on the GH7 and the S1R2, but as of right now, it actually covers a lot of settings that are available on those cameras. But the settings that are not available on the S5 II and the S5 IIx, those are what those sections are being created for. I decided to release this video for free on my YouTube channel so that you guys could watch and understand what the format is in the course and see if it is something that is for you. There will be a link in the description that will take you to the website so you can learn more or purchase the course. My name's Dustin, your video tour guide. Remember to keep your arms and legs inside your chairs at all times. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Connecting your Lumix camera to the Lumix Lab app allows for photo, video, and LUT transfers, wireless remote control and monitoring, as well as live streaming setup. After the initial pairing, your camera will automatically reconnect to your phone whenever Bluetooth is enabled and you open the Lumix Lab app. There's also a number of different things that the Lumix Lab app has to offer. So step one is to make sure you have a compatible device to connect to. Before starting, ensure that your smartphone supports Bluetooth low energy. Android devices must be running Android 10 or higher with Bluetooth 4.0 or above, excluding devices that do not support Bluetooth low energy. iOS devices must be running iOS 15 or higher. Now make sure Bluetooth is turned on in your smartphone settings before proceeding. Next, we want to download and install the Lumix Lab app from the App Store or the Google Play Store. Once downloaded, open the app and follow the on-screen guidance. Be sure that you enable access to all of these prompts or you may encounter problems with connection from your camera to your phone. After this, navigate to the camera tab in the app, then go to your camera and turn on Bluetooth on your camera. This can be found in the blue wrench menu under the in slash out setting. Select Bluetooth and turn on the Bluetooth function. If your camera doesn't appear in the app for pairing, click the pairing function on the camera and choose add new device. Your camera should appear in the app and click on the pair option. Your camera is now connected to the app and registered as a paired device. If pairing takes too long, cancel the pairing on both the camera and smartphone, then retry. Your camera can remember up to 16 smartphones, but it can only connect to one device at a time. Now that we are connected, notice that there are some functions that have appeared on the screen. Let's first start with the shutter remote control. When we click this option, we can trigger the camera to take a picture or start recording remotely. You can also lock the shutter the same way you would lock it using a shutter remote. Let's now use the camera control function. When you click this option, the camera is going to establish a Wi-Fi connection to the camera. If your phone is prompted to connect to the Wi-Fi of your camera, be sure to click connect and allow any permissions. You can now view and control most all of your settings wirelessly. 
shutter, f-stop, ISO, white balance, and even trigger the camera to begin recording or take a photo. You can even press this arrow at the top of the screen to adjust other settings like photo style, record quality, self timer, and more. Notice also this camera icon in the top right corner. When you press that button, it's going to switch your camera from the video or photo setting to the photo or video setting. So watch how now I'm in the photo settings and can adjust different options that are only available in the photo mode. Just note that if you disconnect from the app while doing this, the camera will switch back to whatever mode your mode dial is set to on the camera. Let's move on to the transfer function. Go ahead and click the transfer photo and video function. From here, you can view the contents of the SD card and choose which files you'd like to transfer. Be aware though that when it comes to video that there are some limitations. You will only be able to transfer MP4 or MP4 Lite files from your camera to your phone. This is because MOV files and ProRes files are just much larger and MP4 plays nicer on mobile devices. Let's go ahead and choose a video file and a photo file to transfer. You will have the option to compress the photo as well on the download. Click the download option in the bottom right corner and the files will transfer. Now go back and you can now view those files in your gallery. When you select one, you will be able to change the photo style and you can click tools, you will be able to process the same picture the same way that you would in a post-processing application like Photoshop to your liking. You can also add more files using the batch option to apply those same changes to all those files. If you take pictures with your phone, you can also add those files from your phone gallery into the Lumix Lab Gallery and edit those photos the same way you would edit the photos from your Lumix camera. Now let's move on to the LUT transfer function. When you click this function, you will enter what's called your LUT library. LUTs are essentially look files that can apply to your photos or videos to give you a unique or creative look without having to edit the file yourself. You will be able to see which LUTs are stored on the camera in the camera tab and which LUTs are stored on your phone or device in the device tab. The cool thing about this function is you can transfer your looks from your phone to your camera or even LUTs from your camera to your phone. Select a LUT you'd like to transfer and click send to device or send to camera. Here you can also delete LUTs or change the name. Now let's move on to the download tab, which is where you can download a ton of LUTs for your camera. Feel free to explore this tab to download LUTs from Lumix or even some of your favorite creators like me. If you'd like to create a LUT for yourself, you can do this in the gallery section while you're editing a photo. After adjusting a picture to your liking and you click the option to save the photo in the top right corner, you can choose to save the photo or even create a LUT. Name the LUT and the option below is just telling you which photo style you are using to create this LUT and will change to that photo style when you're using real-time LUT on your camera. Click set. 
Now, when you go back to your LUT library tab in the bottom right of the Lumix Lab app, you'll see that your LUT will appear. And to transfer it to your camera, just connect back to your camera via Wi Fi. Click on device, choose the new LUT, click transfer to camera, and choose where you'd like to store it, or overwrite a current LUT. Click LUT transfer, and now your LUT will be saved to your camera. The last option is the streaming function, which I actually cover in the streaming section of the course, not in the app, but in camera. And this won't be available on all cameras, but on the S52X, the GH7, and the S1R2, and possibly future cameras to come. The idea, though, is essentially the same, but let me show you how it works on the app. Click on streaming, then click stream with RTMP slash RTMPS. Here, you will be able to choose between Wi-Fi and USB tethering. First though, select your streaming quality, then enter your stream URL and stream key. When streaming from YouTube, the place that you find this is in your Go Live dashboard. Once you've entered those, select the Wi-Fi network, then click Set to the camera. It's going to ask for the password for the Wi-Fi network. After entering, click set, and the app is going to turn on all the settings on your camera in order to go live. From your phone, click start stream, and you are now live streaming. You can click end stream to stop. The other option is to stream via USB tethering. The process is the exact same, except one thing you need to change on your phone in order for this option to work, and that is to enable USB tethering in your network settings. The order I suggest using in order to get this function to work is to first choose your streaming quality, enter your stream information, then click USB tethering, and set to the camera. You may be prompted to now connect to your camera via a USB-C, or it may skip from this prompt and go straight to the start stream screen. At this point, if you weren't prompted before, now at this point, plug in your camera via USB-C to your phone, and if you click start stream, it'll prompt you that you need to enable USB tethering. For me, it is located in settings, connections, mobile hotspot and tethering, and USB tethering. I also had to enable the Bluetooth tethering function in order for this to work, and you may or may not have to as well. Now go back to the app and click Start Stream, and now you will be streaming via USB-C tethering. And that's everything you need to know when using the Lumix Lab app with your Lumix camera. Just a reminder about the link in the description that will take you to my website so you can learn more about the Lumix Pro course. But besides that, thanks for watching, and until the next video, happy filming.